see how this plays out, shall we? Hey everybody, what's going on? Ultimate DJ's here with another Teaching Trek video, and today, maintenance underway and the launch of patch D23. What does it bring? We're gonna give you everything right now. First, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Click the little bell notification, like this video, and leave your comments below so that we can answer those as we go through. Lots of information coming your way, so get ready, buckle up. Here we go with D23. Let's first start with what people care about the least. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I know some people actually really enjoy the avatars, really enjoy the frames. So let's take a look at those first. We'll begin here with the avatars and a couple of new avatars being launched here with this patch that you will be able to earn throughout the arc. First, Veteran of the Klingon War. A very interesting, actually a very cool piece of artwork there. I actually really like that avatar and I'm not really a big avatar guy. We also have Call of the Empire earned from a specific Call of the Empire event. Uncommon Officer Tilly. Yes, Tilly is making it into the game. And uh, we take a look here at the Distinguished Service avatar. Again, a very nice looking avatar there. I'm digging the new and original artwork. And of course, the epic avatar, Officer Philippa Giorgio. Let's take a look over here at the frames. We got a new uh, couple of frames coming into the game this arc with the gold discovery emblem frame, the lower decks frame, and the red alert frame. Now I'm kind of digging this red alert frame, not a traditional square, kind of digging the way that the artwork is done there. And we have But Who's Counting. Again, some of these are going to be earned through various different events throughout this arc. Now, as you just saw a second ago, we are getting a few new officers, three new officers this patch. Let's take a quick look. We're going to begin with Uncommon Officer Tilly. Yay! I love Tilly. I love the Tilly character. I especially love Captain Killy, for those of you who have watched the series. Let's take a look at her first captain's maneuver. At the start of combat, when defending from a player attack, Tilly decreases the opponent's shield health by 10% of its starting shield health. Actually sounds like a very fascinating captain's maneuver. Perhaps a base defense officer removing 10% from the shield automatically. I kind of like that ability in a ship in dock. Let's take a look at her officer ability. Again, lending itself to base defense. Every time the ship is hit by an opponent's weapon attack, Tilly has a 30% chance to decrease the opponent's officer's attack by 15%. And this is a cumulative or a stacking ability. Now remember, reducing the officer attack stats won't result in no attack if you get to 100%. It reduces the attack as you go because the officer's stat bonus will decrease, therefore decreasing the overall weapon damage. You're also going to reduce the stat bonuses. What you will eventually reduce to zero is the attack bonuses if you go long enough. They actually really, really captured her likeness here. I really like this officer card. Next officer is Rare Stamets. See the mushroom spores floating around his head? <laughs> <laughs> Captain's Maneuver, very, very nice for operating the USS Discovery. I'd say definitely for summoning. Don't know how he's going to hold up during a burst event or in combat, but very, very much important for the summoning ability of the USS Discovery. This is a must-have in the Captain's Chair. A 20% reduction in the cost of cultivated mycelium. This is actually a very, very nice ability. The Officer ability? Nah, don't know if you'd ever want to use this in combat, so the Officer ability is a little bump there to help you defend yourself if you have your discovery in PvP or using it for discovery summons. But essentially, when defending against a player, Stamets decreasing the opponent's armor piercing by 40%. Finally, the third new officer this arc, Epic Philippa Giorgio. What? What is this? A Federation burning officer? Let's take a look at the abilities here. First, the captain's maneuver. At the start of each round, if the opponent is burning, Captain Giorgio decreases the attack of all officers on the opponent's ship by 100% for that round. 
Again, looking very similar to Tilly's ability, except that this is if the opponent's ship is burning. Reducing attack of all officers by 100%, essentially removing some of the attack bonuses. Remember again, this is scopely math. Reducing something 100% is reducing it by 1.0, or cutting it in half, the one plus one. Still, you remove half of the attack stats, and you could eliminate some attack officer stat bonuses, thus making the weapon damage of the opponent's ship much weaker. And of course, keep in mind, this isn't going to remove exactly half of the stats. It's a reduction of the stats. So further testing is going to be needed to see exactly how she affects the net results and the officer bonuses. But at first glance, this kind of looks like a direct inverse of prime officers, but for attack only. And if that's the case, oh, watch out, Galaxy, because this officer does indeed qualify as epic. Combined with her officer ability on the right ship, this officer could be devastating. Let's take a look at her officer ability, and that is at the beginning of each round, Giorgio has a 50% chance of burning the opponent's ship for two rounds. And of course, we know as the officer ability, this will increase with promotion. We can take a look here and see what it goes to. Tier 2 is going to increase that chance to 60%. Tier 3 at 70%. Tier 4 is 75%. Let's take a look at Center here very briefly. Philippa can get up to 50% synergy, making her captain's maneuver a total of 150% reduction to opponent's attack stats. A time and a half as powerful as prime officers. Again, though, just on the attack stat only, but just looking absolutely wowzers. Could be a massive officer paired with burning on an auger? I don't know. The right combination of crew with this officer could be absolutely massive. We'll take a look at Tilly and her synergy able to get up to 20% synergy on each side, removing a total 30% of the starting shield from any ship if she's in the captain's chair defending, and again, look really, really good in base defense. After the first arc's officers were a little bit so-so, this arc comes out with three great new officers, at least at first glance, ones that will definitely be worth pursuing. P.S. In the patch notes for D23, we read that Saru is now fixed as well, making him even more valuable from the first arc that he's working correctly, as well as a cumulative crit chance reduction officer. Some good stuff with officers coming here, guys. You'll note that these three new officers are all Discovery crew, making them synergize with Epic Burnham and Rare Saru from the last arc. Now for the meat and potatoes, what you've all been waiting for, the research, the new research nodes in the Galaxy Tree for the USS Discovery. These will present themselves in the Galaxy Research Tree, and what I'm seeing here are four new nodes. This is a cultivated mycelium jump efficiency, going to reduce the amount of mycelium used per jump or per summons. As we accurately predicted, summoning ships is going to use cultivated mycelium, but now you have a chance to reduce that cost with this research. This research not costing uncommons, which is good, but common gas, which is not a big deal, but this is the fear. The dreaded spore drive components. Only 130 for level 1 of this research, but a requirement of a commodity that is hard to obtain nonetheless. At least thus far through Arc 1. Let's take a look at the next research node. This is Discovery Impulse Speed. This is going to be a really nice one for those of you involved in conflicts in the galaxy. Increasing the speed to help this ship avoid attackers, whether it be in burst events or in actual combat, where you could be using the summons capability. Only three levels on this research, and again, spore drive components and common gas at level one. It's important to note that even with it costing common gas, there are other researches out there to help lower this number. Most recently, the research in the beta leg of the outlaw research tree. Next, you'll see here the actual Discovery Summoning Research, almost like a prime highlighted in gold. It's a one-level research that, whoops, <laughs> requires you to have jump efficiency and the impulse speed maxed in research. So we can't even complete the Discovery Summons until we max these first two nodes. Also looks like, at least for summons here, we're going to have to have Ops 30 to unlock the summoning capability. So despite Discovery being an Ops 21 ship, needing to get to Ops 30 to unlock some of her more interesting abilities. Let's fast forward here for a second and go over to the one that everyone's been hollering about, and that's Warp Range. Now, it looks like common gas and spore drive components so far. Let's click through a few of these researches. So far, all commons, uh, but spore drive components. Not a terrible number, but these are kind of adding up here. Uh, now, also keep in mind, this Warp Range research 
is ops gated? In a moment, we're going to throw up a summary chart for research for the ops levels required and the general cost of this research. Remember, this is so important. This is not my account and your dilithium and gas amounts will vary with the research you already have on your account. But this should be a relatively accurate estimation of the cost. For this particular account, it is a maxed level 39 account. So all gas and dill research would be maxed for ops 39. If you're not there, then these costs costs could be a little bit higher as far as the common gas and the dilithium. The spore drive components will remain fixed for all levels. Though through level 5 here, not looking too bad, and this is where we cap out. This particular account is not yet Ops 41. We'll show you a chart here in a second as to how it breaks down. Now let's go back and finish up the first two researches so we can take a look at summons and what it costs. Let's start with mycelium efficiency and punch through these as best we can. While we're at it, we can examine the cost, and again, this is going to be a bit higher for some of you because the research on this particular account, even the gas could be a little bit higher because of the gas research here, but again, being that it's common gas isn't really a terrible cost. So clicking through here, using a bunch of latinum, and yes, again, remember, not my account, so I do not have 125 billion latinum. <laughs> don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see, how, how far did we have to go? Oh yes, we have to max it. We have to max them out. Oof. Okay, let's continue. Uh, keep clicking through. We see here we're going to just speed click this a little bit, and again, all of these costs been itemized on a chart that we're going to share you here in just a moment. Click, click, click. Okay, so everything is maxed and now we can unlock summons, but summoning clearly launched in this arc is going to be a pay to progress type model, at least for this arc, which isn't wildly unexpected. Some folks will pay to unlock this this month, while others are going to grind it out and take a little bit longer. Now we're told that not only will the burst events function differently this arc, but that spore drive components will be issued with a higher frequency for players participating, which is very, very welcome news as we get to take a look at our summary charts here in just a second. Before we do, I'd like to take a moment, just sit right there. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> While we remind you that I would love to show you the actual function of Discovery Summons, but sadly it is going to require an app update, which we won't have until you have it. So hopefully we'll be able to share a video with you a little bit later in the day, a much shorter video to actually demonstrate Discovery Summons. Now, let's take a look at our summary charts. First one we'll take a look at here is the Mycelium Efficiency totaling 5,140 common gas, and again, could vary with your account. But what won't vary, what is fixed, is the 5,425 spore drive components. Yes, folks, 5,400. Uh, looks like just shy of about 6, uh, 6 million, rather, in dilithium. And you can see the benefit of the extra percentages added for each level of this research. You'll also notice that cultivated mycelium efficiency is ops gated. You'll have to be ops 23 to get level one and then in uh, increasing by one level each one all the way up to number eight where it goes to uh, ops 30 levels eight nine and ten of this research all unlocking at ops 30 allowing you to finish maxing out this particular research now again just as a reminder the benefit capping out at 50 percent remember scopely math that's technically a 33 percent reduction and that's not actually a terrible research if you're looking to spend and and if you feel like you could enjoy this arc, then that amount of spore drive components can be purchased with approximately a $100 pack. So to max this efficiency research out, almost maybe kind of technically acting like a prime in which about $100 can actually max this research node. Not terrible, and if you're in the mood to spend, then this actually can speed your progress. Let's take a look at the impulse speed here very quickly. It's only a three level research, and again, requiring a number of spore Four drive components, a total of 4,020. Again, a little bit less than a $100 pack, but you'd kind of have to have about another $100 pack to get the spore drive components to max this three level research out. Just shy of 3 billion in, or 3 million, I keep saying billion, 3 million into lithium, but again, could be higher for some of you along with the common gas because of the research. And again, ops gated, ops 24 to unlock level one of this research, then 27 for level two, and ops 
30 for level 3. Taking a look at the actual summoning now, which is a very, very small chart. We'll add it to this same screen here. Summoning costing 695 uncommon gas. And again, this number can vary because of the research on this account. So for some of you, it could be a little bit more. Does require Ops 30, 5.3 million dill, which will vary by account and a whopping 5,400 Spore Drive components. That number will be fixed. So if your Ops 30 or higher, 5,410 Spore Drive components to unlock the summoning feature. And again, that also being equal to roughly a $100 pack. So to fast track this entire research tree to get to Discovery Summons, you could drop approximately $300, which sounds like a lot, but compared to other expansions, this is actually relatively cheap. On the other hand, is this research something that you are going to get, something that you're going to accomplish this month? Maybe not for some of you. You, and that's okay. We've talked before about progression in the game and how it's not designed for you to do overnight, especially given some of the amazing capabilities of this ship. This should excite us all about progressing with this discovery and allowing us to be able to use it moving forward. Let's take a look at the Warp Range expansion, which is absolutely huge. Probably the biggest benefit that we've got with this entire arc. And, gosh, relatively cheap. Making this ship available for dark space has the VI screaming a victory, but seems to be ops gated. For example, a level 39 is still not jumping into deep dark space on this ship, even if the discovery could be tier 9 maxed. A level 39 could get a 30 bonus, plus another 5 from Scotty, and then of course 30 from a tier 9 discovery with the ship at max, and that's a total of only warp 65, which is enough to get to the first baby systems of dark space, but not a housing system, so could help get your miners to and to avoid the warp timers, but not giving them run of all of dark space. At Ops 35, for example, plus a max discovery, that's a warp range of 50, which gets you literally almost anywhere on the map in non-dark space. At Ops 31, you could max out at warp 40 with Scotty, which is probably somewhere that you're not already, because at 31, you don't have a faction miner with that warp capability yet, in all likelihood. At first glance, these Ops gates appear here to be relatively well designed and decently balanced. However, time will tell in actual gameplay. This is patch D23 and the new research and features of the USS Discovery that are unlocking this month. What do you think, community? Leave your comments in the section below. Share this with your alliance mates and your friends as this is your first look at the new research, the cost, the new officers, and what we could potentially expect as far as progression throughout this Discovery arc 2 and of course please subscribe to the video click the little bell notifier thingy like the video leave your comments below we'll be sure to answer those and share those throughout along with your feedback my name is ultimate DJs this has been your first scoop inside look at patch d23 and we'll see you next time love you made it bye bye